Well, it is a delight to be back with you at Islington Baptist Church. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not able to be with you in person. So Pastor Todd asked me if I would uh, send you a video of my sermon. Uh, so, uh, so glad to be able to do this. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Father, we just pray that as we uh, spend a few minutes this morning looking at the prayer of Jabez, that you would encourage our hearts. We know that different people are going through different challenges. And Lord, we just pray that your spirit would take and apply your word this morning uh, to whatever need is represented in this place. And we commit our time to you in Jesus' name. Well, let me read, first of all, a few verses from the prayer of Jabez, uh, found in uh, 1 Chronicles 4, 9 and 10. It says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I give birth to him in pain. And Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm, so that I will be free from pain. And God granted him his request. Now, this prayer is found in a part of the Bible that few of us would go to have our daily devotions. You see, it's just one long list of names, descendants from Adam, right down to King David's tribe and clan. Now, at first class, it seems that this could be interpreted as a self-centered, even a selfish prayer. Imagine you are at a prayer meeting at Islington Baptist and an unknown guest joins the prayer circle and prays, O oh Lord, bless me. There's no word about his wife or his family or his children or his church or a lost world. It's just, Lord, bless me. Then the guest continues praying, Lord, extend my territory. You think to yourself, is this person only concerned about ex expanding his own personal real estate? Or is he one of the lucky ones whose wealth portfolio has actually increased during COVID? Well, our guest continues praying, Lord, let your hand be on me. Now, you can almost be ready to interrupt this person praying to ask him, hey, my friend, don't you know that there's a big suffering world outside of your self-centered bubble? Finally, he prays, Lord, keep me from harm so that I won't experience pain. Well, by now, you've just about had it with this person, Jabez. Surely he must be a self-centered egotist. Somehow he thinks he should have the privilege to escape pain while the rest of us suffer in the winter of COVID. Yes, at first glance, this could be interpreted as a prayer of a selfish man. But friends, before we judge Javez too harshly, let us take a closer look at the text. Well, notice in verse 9, it says, Javez was more honorable than all of his brothers. Now, we know that God knows our heart. It would be surprising to call a selfish and self-centered man by nature honorable. Now, you may know and also be surprised to hear in verse 10, at the end of this prayer, it says God granted him his request. Well, I don't think God is in the business of answering prayers of selfish people. Do you? Next slide, please. James 4 verse 3 says, When you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. So let's take a few minutes this morning to discern what God might say to you and to me from the prayer of Jephaz. Before we look at the prayer, we need to consider his name. Imagine your mother giving you a name which means big pain. Next slide. That's exactly what Jabez means. In verse 9, it says, His mother named him Jabez, saying, I give birth to him in pain. You see, Jabez came into this world, I'm sure, causing pain. And I'm sure he experienced pain 
the rest of his life. Well, think of the kids that played with him. Seeing Javez coming to play, perhaps he would tease him and say, look, here comes that big pain, Javez. Now, none of us like to be labelled, especially in negative ways. Sometimes we label people because of their place of birth. People like to make Nufi jokes about people from Newfoundland or Paddy jokes about people like me from Ireland. Others make fun of people because of their ethnicity or because of their race. Sadly, we see so many families south of the border split and polarized because of the political party labels they support. Friends, it's so easy to demonize those who are different from us. But notice that Javez rose above the pain and the name calling. It says Javez was more honorable than all of his brothers. Friends, it's so important that we break the circle of name calling and stereotyping that we face in life. You know, growing up in Ireland, I dropped out of school at the age of 15. And one day I overheard one of my relatives saying, that Robert, he'll never amount to anything. Well, what a blow to the self-esteem of a teenager to be labeled a loser. Yes, we've been through some tough years. For some, it has brought a lot of stress and pain. But friends, there's a message and there's a hope and there's encouragement that God wants to give you and me this morning, I believe, through the prayer of Jabez. God does not want the negative labels to shape your identity or your destiny. And this morning, I want us to learn some important principles from life, from the prayer of Jabez. Next slide. First, I want you to see Jabez didn't turn inward. Instead, he turned to his God. Notice what it says. It says, Javez cried out to the God of Israel. Like Javez in the midst of his pain and suffering, we need to develop a theology of lament by taking our pain and our sorrow into the presence of God. Psalm 62, 8 says, Trust in the Lord at all times and pour out your heart to him. For God is our refuge. Yes, Javez was known and labeled as a big pain, but he did not allow this label or his experience to determine the outcome of his life or to shape his future. No, instead, friends, he turned to God and it was there that he found strength and vision to make him into a man of honor. And this is my prayer for each of us as we step out in faith into 2022. Next slide. Secondly, I want you to see how Jabez prayed for God's favor. He cried, Lord, bless me. I like how one commentator defines the idea to bless. He says to bless is to ask God to impart his supernatural favor and divine enabling for success. Seeking God's blessing is a theme that runs throughout the whole Bible. You remember when God chose Abraham, he declared, I will bless you and I will make you into a great nation. Now we know that pronouncement of blessing was not given for selfish purposes. Instead, it was given so that he would become a blessing to the nations. Or think of the incident when Jacob struggled with the angel and exclaimed, I will not let you go until you bless me. What was the outcome of that blessing? His name was changed from Jacob, meaning deceiver, to Israel, the father of a great nation, chosen by God. Or try to imagine Aaron, the high priest, standing at the door of the tabernacle, praying this prayer of blessing over Israel. Next slide saying, the Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. You see, the Lord had chosen Israel to be a lighthouse, allowing his light to shine outward upon the nations. But sadly, they explained the transparent windows 
with mirrors so that God's light shone only upon themselves instead of outward towards the nations. Friends, God's blessing, his favour, is to be shared with others. I heard the, recently the story of a farmer who discovered a new kind of farm corn seed. And when it planted it, his crops doubled at harvest time. And when the neighbouring farmer saw his abundance harvest, he asked if he would share his newly discovered seed. The farmer stubbornly refused as he did not want to share the blessing. Surprisingly, the following year, that farmer's crop decreased because the pollen from the other farmer's corn infected his new seed. You see, friends, if only he had shared the blessing, he would have been blessed as well. Friends, the Bible tells us, God has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every blessing in Christ Jesus. As one commentator observed, we don't produce the blessing, but are called to distribute them by the Holy Spirit as it works within us. Yes, these have been challenging days for many of us. Even if we were spared from getting COVID, having to live in close proximity with our significant others often raise significant stress levels within our relationships. Friends, I want to encourage you, do not allow your circumstances to turn God's blessing inward. Instead, our prayer is that in this year of 2022, we will, like Jabez, cry out, Lord, bless me, anoint me with your favor so that I can bless others. Yes, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel and he prayed that God would bless him so he could be a blessing for others. Now he prays, Lord, enlarge my territory. Now, what does it mean by this statement? Well, we must remember that Jabez was a descendant of Abraham, who is described in Deuteronomy 26, 5 as a wandering Aramean, was his father. You see, for many years, God's people lived in tents, and as they wandered, they grew and they prospered, and out of necessity, they had to expand their tents. And listen to the promise God gave to Isaiah to his people after their time in exile. It says, enlarge the site of your tent, stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not hold back, lengthen your ropes and drive down deep your stakes. You see, when Jepez prayed, Lord, enlarge my territory, he's saying, Lord, if you bless me, then you'll be increasing my territory, the influence I have to bless others. I love the story of William Carey, a simple cobbler who lived in England in the 1700s. Carey had a passion and a vision to reach the lost in India. And when he shared that vision with a group of Baptist pastors, the response was shattering. They told Carey, sit down, young man. If God wants to bless the heathen in India, He'll do it without your help or ours. Now, Kerry did not give up. Instead, like Javez, he asked God to extend his territory. His vision was this, expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. And Kerry stepped out in faith and God made him a blessing and gave him the influence to bless the people of India. Friends, as we reflect, on the year that's gone past. It could be so easy to be discouraged. For some, it's been made, laid out of work. For others, maybe your income has been reduced. For others, it's the inflation and the costs of gas or not being able to visit your extended family. As a church, it's meant not being able to gather together as the body of Christ. Well, perhaps it seems that instead of our territory and the influence being expanded, it is actually being, being reduced. Well, dear friends, let me encourage you. This is not a time to lose hope. Let us not be like Peter, who took his eyes of Jesus and looked at the waves and began to sink because of his doubt. You know, as the writer of the Hebrews says, and challenges God's people when he says, next slide, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. 
Now, friends, here's a caution. To fix your eyes on Jesus does not mean we passively sit and do nothing. Just look at the preceding verse. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us. And let us run the race with endurance that is set before us. Notice the writer calls for action using the picture of a race. First, he says, throw off all that holds us back. And secondly, he says, run with perseverance. Friends, as we go through 2022 and into 23, I want you to ask yourself, how has God extended my influence to be a blessing to others? Now be realistic. Begin by taking baby steps. I confess when COVID was at its height, I was being very, very negative, being locked down on the 22nd floor of our condo building. I said, Lord, what am I going to do? So I decided I would set it as a goal to have a Zoom call with one diaspora immigrant leader every three days. I would email each person and I would ask them to be open for a 30 minute chat on Zoom. I had no big agenda other than to bless them by letting them know that we're not forgotten. Now by doing this simple act, something amazing happened. The Lord used this small act to expand my territory of influence and to be a blessing to these leaders. Friends, it's my prayer that as we move through 22 into 23, God will use you even in the small ways to expand, extend his territory and influence to be a greater blessing to those around you. Now, the fourth lesson Jephaz teaches us is this. He says, Lord, let your hand be with me. You know, one of the big lessons of COVID has taught us that we're not always in control of life. And this is a challenge for many of us in the Western world who think we're in control of what happens in our lives. And when Jephaz prays for the Lord's hand to be with him, he's confessing this need to depend on God's presence and power and not on his own. You know, the words of Zechariah 4, 6 ring so true when they remind us, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Now, one of the interesting aspects of Jepez's prayer is the fact that Jepez goes through life without getting a name change. So many people in the Bible got new names when they encountered God. Abram was called Abraham. Jacob was called Israel. Cephas was called Peter. Saul was called Paul. And the list could go on. Yet here we have the big pain Jabez, still called the big pain Jabez throughout his life. And it's even recorded in the chronicles of history in the list of the descendants found in First Chronicles. Now, friends, in some ways, I find this encouraging. You see, Jabez is not remembered because of his name being changed, but because of his prayer. You see, it would seem that his prayer was more than just words. He allowed God to transform his life so that the image of pain associated with his life was replaced by a prayer showing that he was an honorable man showing that he had motivation to be blessed in order to bless others, showing that he longed for influence and he succeeded because here is the big pain standing head and shoulders above all the names in the genealogy. He prayed for God's hand to be upon him and it was because it says God granted him his request. Friends, think about this. Maybe you are here this morning in something in your life that you cannot change. For Jephaz, it was his name. Now, when bad things happen in our lives and we know we cannot change and we have a choice to make, do we go through life blaming ourselves, blaming others or even blaming God? Or do we ask God to allow his presence to be so real that we know his hand is upon us? Friends, my prayer is, 
we will claim these promises as we go forward into 22 and 23. Listen to what it says in Psalm 139. It says, you go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing upon me. And Psalm 63, 8 tells us, my soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. May each of us as individuals and as families and as a church family step into the rest of this year and 2023 with the assurance that God's hand is upon us. So friends, we come now to the last part of Jabez's prayer when he prays, keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. You know, we've seen that Jabez was a man familiar with pain. He had caused pain coming into the world and no doubt he had experienced pain throughout his life. Yet it seems he had learned to lean into God and become a blessing to others. His influence had gained him recognition as an honorable man among his people. He recognized and learned that all of this was due not to his own strength or might, but because the hand of the Lord was upon him. Now notice how Jepez completes his prayer, praying that God will protect him. Why? Because he's aware of his own weakness, his own vulnerability. Now I'm sure all of us want to avoid pain in our lives. However, we know that sometimes Pain is unavoidable. To expect to live a pain-free life would certainly be unrealistic. But friends, pain comes in different forms and sometimes it can be self-inflicted. You see, in Canada, we have an opioid crisis. Some people begin taking fentanyl as a treatment for physical pain and often it will lead to substance abuse and sometimes eventually death. This is what we call self-inflicted pain. And many have suffered pain because of COVID. But many others are suffering a result of toxic relationships caused by social isolation or the inflation on the cost of living that we're experiencing. But self-inflicted pain, friends, can also be a result of sin and ignoring the dangers of temptation. And I think this is what Jabez is alluding to. Next slide. In fact, one could translate Javez's prayer as, Lord, keep me from evil so that I will not be grieved. You see, in many ways, it reminds us of the Lord's prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This, friends, is a prayer of protection. But in order to be protected, we also pray for God's wisdom to know ourselves and to avoid those things that play into our weakness. <clears throat> I want to encourage us to pause and ask ourselves, what have I learned about myself this past year? Next slide. You see, when this, like the psalmist, we can pray, search me, Lord, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Yes, like Jephaz, we need to pray for God's protection. But we also need to be wise and take active steps to avoid putting ourselves in places where the evil one can exploit our area of weakness. We call this active avoidance. And there's one great example of active avoidance that I like is found in Genesis 39. You remember how Pharaoh's wife, tried to seduce Joseph, the young up-and-coming refugee. You remember what Joseph's response was? Did he enter into a discussion with Pharaoh's wife regarding sexual morality? No, the Bible simply states two words to describe his avoidance strategy. It says, Joseph ran. Friends, what will our strategy of avoidance be when faced with temptation? Here are some practical steps to consider in closing as we develop a strategy of avoidance. First, like we saw with Jephaz, take your pain and struggles into the presence of the Lord and learn to exercise a, a discipline of lament. Find a mentor, someone you can trust, someone you can pour out your struggles with. This year I lost my dear friend and mentor Bob Morris, and this was a 
painful loss and experience for me. Ask yourself these questions. What is one thing have I learned about myself this year that is a weakness that the devil could exploit? And finally, what steps can I take to avoid putting myself in a place where my weakness will be exploited? And pray for God's protection that his hand will be upon you as we go forward in this year. Let us pray together. Lord God, we thank you for the prayer of Javez. Lord, it's the prayer of a man who's seeking in the challenges of life to live life in obedience to yourself, seeking your blessing, seeking that your hand would be upon him. And Lord, he was a man who experienced pain, but he took that pain into your presence with the cry of lament. Oh Lord, we pray for those who are among us who may be going through difficult times, that the prayer of Japaz will be a source of encouragement to each one of us. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.